every night fucks every day up Every day patches done mud up Can y'all see me like that? What should I put this brightness back down? Oh yeah, we looking good. Hold on. Spike Leak looking like a motherfucking meal. Five star, five course meal. Anyways, you know what I'm saying? Spike Leak in the building, you know who it is, you know what I'm saying? Wavy is boss in the game, don't get it twisted. Today, I bring y'all here to announce my most anticipated albums of 2023 these are albums that i believe is coming out so yeah we just gonna get in straight to it there's 15 artists that i can't wait to hear from in 2023 let's get it first one we have is no name herself no name i don't know why i just said that last time she dropped was room 25 and 2020 uh, what not 2020 see it's been so long ago i'm so used to saying 2020 and it wasn't even 2020 it wasn't even in this decade that, that's how you know it's a problem last time she dropped was Room 25 in 2018. You know, she always come with that sophisticated, jazzy, spoken word type feel with her music and her flow. Spitting about some real shit. I feel like her music is something that we need to hear because her music always confronts like the elephant in the room when it comes to like politics, black culture, or whatever it is that she's rapping about. I would definitely love to see what she has to bring in 2023. Telephone is a beautiful, just a beautiful masterpiece of an artwork. Like I said, it's a lot of it's a lot of jazzy spoken word type of vibes on that album. When it comes to Room 25, I felt like she experimented more and more with that sound. Like Black Exploitation, uh, Montego Bay, and other songs like that. If she even elevates it again and experiments some more, that'd be even great to do. I believe that she quit music for a good amount of time, so that's part of the reason why she didn't drop it in a while. Started feeling uncomfortable performing in front of predominantly white crowds due to, due to you know, them saying the racial slurs. She said when she's working she has like a thousand people screaming the n-word and other racial slurs at her so that can make anyone feel uncomfortable because your music is empowering black people and like i said um confronting like the elephant in the room about black culture and politics and stuff just stuff that we need to hear so her confronting all of that in her music and performing dumb songs in front of white people and them having the audacity to you know say the racial slurs that she may be singing but that don't give it the right for them to say it but anyways you know that's not a that's not one of them videos for me to you know keep going at it but she stopped music and focused on her book club which if it's possible for y'all to support that book club support no name you know what i'm saying she a real one um, I don't really know her personally, but she seemed like a real one. She seemed real genuine in her work, so. Next artist I'm gonna bring up in this video. Yo, this fucking setup is crazy. I fucking love this. You got the Pac-Man in the back. I'm sorry. I know I'm supposed to be talking about artists, but you gotta appreciate it. You gotta appreciate greatness when it's here. The camera fucking making me look like a fucking snack, you know what I'm saying? Don't get it twisted. Next up on the list I got is Miguel. I actually got a list. That's why if you see me looking down, I'm looking at what I got right here. His last album was in 2017, which was War and Leisure. I feel like Miguel consistently drops great projects, quality projects, quality albums. You no, know, he's an amazing vocalist, amazing performer, amazing artist to begin with. Um, he kind of for the grown folk, you know what I'm saying? He a little nasty, you know what I'm saying? He makes songs about that type of shit. Um, but honestly, not to, you know, toot my horn, but I can relate to his music, bro. Like, I'm just saying like that. We, we both Scorpios, so, like, we kind of got, like, similar traits. So, you feel me? I, I can relate to what he's singing about. But it's like, nah, let me let me chill out. But uh, Miguel has been my dog since middle school. I know I just said his grown man. Folk, he has been my favorite singer for, for a long time. Can't wait to hear from you this year. Hopefully it's this year, you know what I'm saying? But it would be great. To hear some new sounds from Miguel. Next up, next up, we got this bitch ass nigga, man. I really hate him, but I don't. I hate this nigga, bro. I'm just, I'm just say it right there. And the person we talking about is Playboy Card, bro. Why do you lie to your the people that love you so much? Like it really don't make sense. 
But um, I'm gonna speak on a whole lot of red. Personally, I'm not a big fan of the vamp era, Kari. Um, I can respect it though because it's genre bending. It is pushing boundaries. It also has a hell of an influence on a lot of upcoming artists in the underground scene and rap and trap. I can't do nothing but respect it. I can't just turn on a whole lot of red at any moment of my life and just be like, oh yeah, I'm rocking with this right now. It, it, re it really is specifics. I feel like with his other two, it was more, I could listen to them more. Don't get me wrong. I don't think it's ass anything. I think it's a great album and I highly, I have high respect for it. I feel like Cardi is in an experimental point in his career. Cardi is like highly favorable and highly influential in this world of music right now. I feel like if he does anything different, it's gonna be hated on and then loved. Just the same thing that happened with a whole lot of red. Same thing that happened with Dalit. I even, honestly, once I'm thinking about it, I seen it happen with self-titled because everyone wanted that Mexico draw ethereal um, produced music. When I first heard self-titled, bro, I was like, nah, this this the one, bro. This one is crazy. I'm not even finna lie. It's always good to push a boundary, in my opinion. Rather, if it's for the good or bad in other people's ears, I feel like it's always a good idea to do it. You can also hear more of who he is by him pushing the boundary except for giving what people want. So, if he's gonna experiment and go into a new era, cause I'm not gonna say he's gonna leave the vamp era, but I feel like every album is a new Cardi type shit. Like, Self-title and Dalet had his differences and a whole lot of red was just way, way different from them two. Pierre had a had a crucial role in self-title and also had a crucial role in Dalit. But Dalit is literally called Dalit. So that shit was just so lit and hype. Wow, this album was so chill, laid back, and it was still lit, but it wasn't like hype is Dalit. I feel like a whole lot of red had like filthy in there, had like a whole lot of other producers, which I still see him using, according to Filthy actually tweeting now, yeah, the shit me and Cardi made is crazy. Something like that is crazy. Can't wait for y'all to hear it, blah, blah. That's why I hate that nigga. That nigga always teasing some shit. Even if it ain't, it's not It's not really Cardi, it's Filthy, but like, I feel like Cardi be knowing what he doing. He trying to have that mysterious shit going on. I mean, it's working for him, so what can I say? Going on to the next, it's actually um surprising that these two people don't have an album together. The two people I'm talking about is Future and Metro Boomin. That is so, isn't that crazy, bro? Like, I remember 2015, Metro and Future was running shit, bro. Every time I heard Metro booming, the first person I would think of is Future. But the reason I'm hyped, you know, I'm not usually, I'm not the biggest, biggest, biggest Future fan. I know Future hard, he a GOAT at what he does in the trap scene, but Metro and Future having the chemistry they had growing up together in their careers. Both of them has evolved from the time they used to make music together a lot. You know, y'all know what Future do. Future dig into more pockets, more flows. I feel like Future kind of creative when it comes to that type of shit. He just evolved, like, and I feel like Metro Boomin production evolved as well. Has more diversity. Uh, I feel like he's more in depth as a producer as a whole. So I'm expecting this album to be a great project from them too. Next up on the list is another duo that I feel like it's another producer rapper duo, producer artist duo that I, I know make amazing music together. And this is No Worries. No Worries dropped Yes Lord in like 2016, I believe. I kind of got into it late. I don't know why, but I got into it like around 2020. I always knew Sway. For some reason, in 2020, I checked the whole album out. But till this day, that shit is one of my favorite albums of all time. Like, also, I love Knowledge. She's also one of my favorite producers. She's probably top five of my favorite producers right now. Um, and Pac has, he kind of in a lane where he, he's becoming a superstar, it, as if he's already not. Silk Sonic Tape was like one of the biggest things of 2020. It was definitely 2021. See, that shit dropped in 2021. Everybody in the world knows how big that was for both of them. I feel like with Pop becoming a superstar and knowledge just being who he is, making dope instrumentals all the time, that is no way it's gonna go wrong. Just like the first one, Yes Lord. That shit was just an amazing project. And I could listen to that at any moment of the day. What can go wrong here? I'm confused. Like, what can go wrong here? Um, another artist I can't wait to see in 2023 is Baby Keem, man. Two Phone Baby Keem, this is my guy right here. In Scapegoat, the song on the melodic blue, he said, 
I tell the story two years later. That's what he said. So it is two years later from 2021. You know what I'm saying? That's when he dropped the album. So let's see what the story about. And another thing, speaking of stories and Baby Keem, he is very unpredictable, bro. Like I would never think that he would be telling a story, but here we are. The dude have will have a melodic song here. He'll have a rapping song here, or alternative song here, a trap song here, or a hype song here. Like that shit is insane. Like he he's one of the most exciting rising stars in my opinion right now. So I'm definitely excited to see what he got for this year. Another guy I got on the list, is my dog J Cole. Um, I've been a big fan of J Cole since 2010. He's been my favorite rapper. 2010 to like 2018. After 2018, I kind I came to realize I don't really have a favorite rapper no more. I just love all of them for real. Cole had made a list. I think it dropped. It surfaced around the time. Well, it surfaced after he dropped Revenge of the Dreamers 3. It's called the Fall Off List, and it says features, which I'm guessing was his feature run that he did in like 2018, 2017. And uh, then it has Revenge of the Dreamers 3 crossed off. Then it says the offseason It's a Boy to Fall Off. The offseason dropped in 2020. So that would be crossed off now if we're going directly from this list. Next up, if we're going directly from this list, is It's a Boy. Um, it's a Boy to me sound like it can be another conceptual storytelling album. Similar to how For Your Eyes Only and mostly all of his other work besides his mixtapes in the offseason. The offseason kind of gave Mick vibes off to me too. I feel like in the offseason, he wanted to just flex his rapping skills, give us punchlines, give us lyricism, just show us who he is and what he does and that he's one of the best at it. I feel like that's that's what he was going for in the offseason. So now, if he's dropping an album called It's a Boy, that already sounds like he's about to talk about something. Like, is he talking about a child he had or... Is he, he might, could be talking about himself. You never know with him. He does tell stories from other people's perspective. So it could be someone else's baby they just had. Or I don't know. I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to throw y'all off or throw any misinformation out or anything. But it's a boy. Maybe the next album he dropped. And you know when Cole getting in his concept bag or his storytelling bag. That's a, that's a green light right there. So I'm already in tune with that already. Next album I had. It's gonna be the smoothest album of this year. Is also another rapper producer duo, and this is Larry June and The Alchemist. If y'all listen, if y'all know these two names, bro, that that is like a match made in heaven in my ears, bro. Cause you have June, he have the most smoothest laid back flow. He just had this smooth laid back approach, and you have The Alchemist, which who is one of the best producers in the game. If he <laughs> This shit is just crazy, bro. <laughs> bro, if he get on that type of time where he doing them drumless samples and Larry June just doing what he do on top of them, bro, it's like, it's no space to go wrong, bro, literally. Why do they not have so much songs together? That is my question. Next artist I have up, this might be a surprise to y'all that he's so high. My guy Smino, man. Y'all know Smino is my favorite artist, for real. If not my favorite, then he top three. I already know what my top three is. But the reason he's so high because he literally just dropped like a few months ago. Actually, he dropped on my birthday, you know what I'm saying? You know, Smee don't know what's up, you know what I'm saying? He know who the waviest boss is. That was only like two, three months ago. Um, of course I'm hyped to hear him still. But like since he just dropped, I'm like, okay. I can I can handle some more, but it's like, like I just got it. You know, I could I could let this breathe in for a little while. So Mino had announced that he's dropping a part two for love for rent i don't know what songs he dropping up there it's a few snippets that i heard that i really really want i love i love you smino but bro i hate when artists tease songs and just never drop it bro like that is the most annoying especially when the song sounds so hard it'd be the most annoying shit in the world get a little comfy over here next on my list is someone i've been listening to a lot lately i just caught his vinyl his name is blood orange he's more in the alternative r and I'm well he does it all kind of he's very versatile uh he's an amazing musician and creator
creative in the music industry. If I was to name off everything he does in his in his music, I can really talk about it for like a good amount of time. I'm gonna just go to Genius real quick. I feel like I'm just now realizing that Jewelry by Blood Orange is one of my favorite songs of all time. Let's see, in Jewelry, so he does vocals, the keyboard, the bass, the drums, the guitar. He does the production, like, come on, he does it all, bro. I really don't have much to say since I have little to no information about this next project. Uh, he dropped a four song EP earlier this year. I actually enjoyed that as well. Oh yeah, the, the vinyl I caught, Negro Swan. I literally just copped it yesterday, fun fact. But anyways, not to promote my vinyl collection. Although if y'all wanna see my vinyl collection, you know, just ask me and I got you. Ugh. Who else we got next up? We got Travis Scott himself, you feel me? He been teasing Utopia for a while. I feel like Travis, the best produced and conceptual trap albums. One thing I wanna know about this album is, is he gonna is he gonna confront the tragedy that happened at Astro World Fest? More news on the album is that I believe, I heard that it was gonna be like, psychedelic rock which i feel like isn't off brand for travis scott he has his rock influence he have his psychedelic influence clearly but yeah i want to see what direction he's gonna go in uh next person on the list i have is my guy right here tyler the creator man the amazing artist he is he's been consistently dropping heat every two years so this is the second this is the second year after his last project so why won't i be expecting him again i don't know but I, I don't know. These two years don't feel like the two years I waited between Flower Boy and Igor. Or Igor and Call Me If You Get Lost. This shit, this shit really feel like Call Me If You Get Lost came out like fucking months ago or some shit. I don't know if that's just me. He's another one that's very unpredictable. Um, it's always very interesting to hear a um, new Tyler the Creator album. Considering that he always switches the uh, soundscape he's using in his music and... It's basically just like a new Tyler the Creator era, like. But I want to see what this aesthetic and this concept of this album is gonna be. All right, top three now. Surprisingly, Tyler ain't make top three. That's crazy. The reason Tyler came in so early is because I just feel like "Call Me If You Get Lost" wasn't that long ago. Next on my list, I have is an underrated guy who was very, very talented, need more appreciation for what he does. It's Thundercat, very, very talented producer. I'm pretty sure your favorite rapper or artist has worked with Thundercat before. Maybe not if you like in the crap lane, but you know. Last drop was 2020 with the album, It Is What It Is. Um, some of my favorite Thundercat tracks is up there, like Black Claws, um, Dragon Ball Do-Rag. The tribute song to Mac Miller, I can't think of the name with Todd Dolla Sign. Oh, Fair Chance. This album is just beautiful as a whole, for real, for real. He's another amazing musician. He He's very, very talented bass player um, and a good vocalist. Apparently, he had billboard ads. Shout out to NFR Podcast. I've been watching them. A lot of this information I actually got from there, me looking back at it now, I appreciate them for putting out quality content at a very consistent pace. Thundercat had these billboard ads, and NFR insinuated that it could be part of an album rollout, which I would be very hyped to hear. I feel like Thundercat is one of them artists where like you can't really find nobody that has that similar sound to him. I mean, you have people like flying lotus and kamazi uh, but it's just i feel like they are they're amazing at what they're doing they they just have different aspects that make them amazing but yeah i'm very psyched for thundercats next part of work next person i have this is the second to last person and this is my dog right here everybody love him everybody know him everybody know him for not driving it's frank ocean man it's hard out here being a frank ocean fan uh, I mean, it's not hard because his music stands for itself, but it's just hard because you don't know when we might have heard Frank Ocean last song ever and we just won't never know. Um, last time Frank Ocean dropped was Blonde in 2016. Seven years now. Frank Ocean always dropped masterpieces. Channel Orange and Blonde is both 10 out of 10s in my eyes. From my eyes, I seen the album rollout start and then it ended. He would drop in them singles, DHL, In My Room. They both had, they had a main artwork and then it had like, there are silhouettes at the bottom of these. You see in DHL, he's posing like this and the silhouette, which is the fourth one, is also posing like that. There's 13 of them. And In My Room, which is the fifth silhouette, 
he's posing sitting down like that and that one is highlighted at the bottom this one look like a lot more hold on 13 14 15 16 17. god damn nigga said i'm gonna add four songs to this shit and never drop it <laughs> like <laughs> not sure what year it was but his brother passed away or somebody close to him passed away i believe it was his brother i feel like that kind of took a toll into the album rollout and he just ended it right there he also had like a coachella headline that year and he just canceled himself from it or whatever so but this year he has another coachella performance was he's headlining in you can't be performing i mean frank ocean has the power to do so not gonna lie for a regular artist i feel like headlining something and performing something from seven years ago is kind of wild to me but also he kind of been giving back to fans low key like he started the um homer brand with the jewelry he also restocked on the blonde vinyl nobody ever ever in the world thought that was gonna happen like, I definitely copped up. I don't know about y'all. My shit literally just came in the mail before I recorded this video. He kind of been, he kind of been giving back. So why not give back with an album? That's what we all waiting for. So the very last artist, which is the number one artist I cannot wait for. Y'all probably guessed it because he ain't getting named yet. It's my brother, ASAP Rock. I've been waiting for him to drop another project for a while. His last project was in 2020. Not. Nah, See, I keep saying 2020. Last drop was in 2018, which is five years ago with the album Testing. I honestly, I honestly love that album. A lot of people don't really see the hype of it. A lot of people when it came out wasn't too fond of it, and I was one of them. I can admit to it. As the album grow on me, which good music will always do. I feel like I'm at a point where I understand him more than I did when I first listened to Testing. I can appreciate his diversity a lot more than I did. Um, I feel like at the time when Testing dropped, I was looking for him to rap, give me the amazing flows that i was used to but he's a diverse artist a very creative artist whatever lane he fits in i feel like i will understand now that's just, that's the point i'm at with he's at rocky he announced the album was finished and it's coming very soon but with this album he tried to be more creative and more forward thinking and he wanted to inspire others to do that as well he previewed some dope ass trap performing on amazon music one is called Same Problems, where he did a tribute to all the dead rappers and stuff like that. Another one, which is the one I've been waiting for since like 20, fuck it. I've been waiting for that since like the year of zero. Fuck it. I've been waiting for that for my whole life type shit. It's a, a song called Mushroom Clouds. And me seeing him perform it is me getting closer and closer to hearing the official version of this song, I feel like. He also mentioned that Metro Boomin has a crucial part in this album, and he has a big role in this album. I'm not sure if that means he having a huge part production-wise. Can be like a uh, um, executive producer. Like executive producer means more than just making beats. Executive producing can mean just being there, making sure the album is executed in the best way as possible. Sometimes they didn't even make a beat. Like for example, LeBron executing that uh, 2 chains project. So I'm not sure what he means when he says that Metro Boomin has a huge part in it, but all I know is I can expect something great. Because Metro Boomin and ASAP Rocky has never made something. Oh wait, my dumb ass, bro. They just dropped the song. But besides that song, I think that's the first time they had a track together. But that's it for this list I have here. That's all the our artists I have. I'm gonna hit you with the um, honorable mentions. In my honorable mentions, I have Lil Uzi Vert. Damn, I didn't get to talk about Lil Wayne, man. Sad day in the neighborhood. Um, Childish Gambino, I feel like he's very, very talented, very creative. I don't know what direction he's gonna go in either. And also Kate Trinata, who was a GOAT. So let me know who y'all have on y'all most anticipated albums this year what who would be on y'all list what is y'all wish list for 2023 make sure you drop a like comment subscribe turn your post notifications on so you won't miss an act of litmus coming out the waviest boss and i also want y'all to have a wonderful day and receive a lot of blessings money and positivity for the day tomorrow and forever because y'all the homie and big things coming this year i'm gonna keep y'all updated about what that means i'm gonna react to all these albums that was mentioned today and comment some more whenever y'all see an album that y'all want us to listen to or y'all want us to react to just let us know let us know um about upcoming releases that y'all want us to react to of course i'm gonna see y'all next time y'all have a wonderful day man big blessings to all y'all in 2023 let's get it